There is a great scene in the movie Independence Day when the pilot sacrifices his life to bring down an alien mother ship. Well, that was fiction. But nearly 60 years ago, a National Guard pilot in Kentucky died in the pursuit of a UFO. Drew Spire is here with the ongoing mystery behind the death of Captain Thomas Mantell. Drew? Well, David, a mystery indeed. This incident came on the heels of another UFO story that happened in the summer of 1947. That's when a UFO allegedly crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. That story, of course, well documented, but this equally puzzling a mystery regarding a UFO in the skies above Kentucky just a few months after the Roswell incident. In our report, 1956 government film addressing this case, a case that will never be solved because Captain Thomas Mantell from Simpson County, Kentucky, an experienced pilot and World War II ace took the answer to his grave. It made headlines across the country. January 7th, 1948, 1.30 p.m., Kentucky State Police received reports of a UFO near Godman Air Force Base. Four F-51 Mustangs on their way to Sanford Air Force Base, Kentucky, are contacted by the tower. In order to investigate a white object some 300 feet in diameter, one plane returns for fuel and oxygen, the three others approach the object. Mantel to tower. I see it. Above and ahead of me. I'm still climbing. The planes climb to 22,000 feet, too high for World War II fighters without oxygen. Two return to the base, leaving Captain Mantell in sole pursuit of the unknown. Minutes later, Mantell with another transmission. Mantell to tower. It appears to be a metallic object of tremendous size. Captain Mantell kept climbing, most likely past 30,000 feet. Radio contact was lost. Gladwin Tower to Captain Mantell. Come in. Over. This is Gladwin Tower to Captain Mantell. Come in. Over. Minutes later, less than two hours from the initial sightings, Mantell's F-51 crashed on a farm in Franklin, Kentucky. His watch stopped at 3.16 p.m., his body still strapped in his plane. By all accounts, he passed out from a lack of oxygen, forcing his plane to plunge to the ground. Today, an historical marker sits near the site where Mantell's plane went down here in Franklin, Kentucky. In fact, it went down on a farm nearby, Joe Phillips' farm. His son, a schoolchild then, was one of the first on the scene. We heard this real loud boom, you know. It actually shook the house. In fact, it was the best I remember, it was two of them, like an explosion. William Phillips Jr. was six years old and homesick with his younger sister when the crash occurred. We run to the window and just happened to run to the right window and see it hit the ground, just as it hit the ground. The news of the incident immediately made headlines. Newspapers reporting that Mantell had been shot down by a magnetic ray from a flying saucer. The story took on a life of its own. He was the first person ever to die while pursuing an unidentified flying object. The military's response? Most likely he was chasing a weather balloon. I can't see that a balloon could move uh, and outrun a P-51. The P-51 was the fastest thing the military virtually had in 47. It's a story almost 60 years later that's still talked about in Franklin, Kentucky, where Mantell was born and, oddly enough, died just a few miles from the Simpson County Tourism Building, where he's honored. There are many UFO buffs who stop by to ask and see what we've got and then want to uh, know as much as they can about the story. It continues to fascinate people even after 50 years. And to this day, people still wonder what Captain Mantell was chasing. While researching this story, we contacted the commander of the Kentucky Air National Guard when this incident took place. 
retired two-star general. Philip Artery is now 93 years old and living in Louisville. We spoke with him and a former chief of staff with the Kentucky Air National Guard, retired Brigadier General Gen Edward Tanini. Coming up tonight at 10 on Newswatch, we'll visit with both of them and hear from a UFO researcher who lives in Mount Vernon, Indiana, who has a different opinion than the military's of what happened that day. Well, as you'll see here in a moment, a 1956 government film detailed the case of Captain Thomas Mantell. It happened just months after another celebrated incident in Roswell, New Mexico, where a UFO had reportedly crashed in the summer of 1947. We spoke with the man who was the commander of the Kentucky Air National Guard when the Mantell case occurred and a former chief of staff with the Guard. We also talked with a UFO researcher, and as you might guess, we got two different opinions. It is a classic to this day. Francis Ridge, who's with the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon, is talking about the case of Kentucky Air National Guard pilot Captain Thomas Mantell. And he decided to go after this object, which was, according to his description, large and metallic, tremendous in size. Mantell, a World War II ace, was chasing a UFO on the afternoon of January 7, 1948, when he crashed his plane and died. The mystery died with him on a farm in Franklin, Kentucky. Ridge and others remain convinced Mantell was chasing an object not of this world. Several years later, uh, when they restructured the project, because, you know, Project Sign was the first one, and they were serious, and they came to the conclusion that we were dealing with something from somewhere else. Project Sign later became Project Blue Book. Because Mantell was a well-respected pilot, it gave the UFO story credibility, and the military was concerned. If you look in the Blue Book archives, if you look at the Blue Book records, which is the Air Force records, it shook a lot of military people up. The man who was the commander of the Kentucky Air National Guard at the time of the incident is retired two-star General Philip Artery, now 93 years old and living in Louisville. He remembers the Mantell case. Well, I'm fascinated with it, and, uh, and that's all I can say about it. I, I find it a very, very interesting part of my experience. Artery believes Mantell was confused and didn't realize he'd reached an altitude with no oxygen. He also believes Mantell wasn't chasing a UFO at all. Well, I think that there are times when we can imagine things that really are not there. Retired Brigadier General Edward Tanini joined the Kentucky Air National Guard in 1969, eventually became Chief of Staff in Kentucky and finished his career at the Pentagon. People that flew P-51s, it was universally accepted that this was a this was not a UFO, but, but in fact was a, was a balloon. He says officers like Mantell did not know of a highly classified secret program involving balloons, which is why Mantell thought he was chasing a UFO, and why it was difficult for the military to explain the skyhook balloon theory away. And as a result, even if it were a balloon that was a part of a Navy secret project, Nobody was going to come out and say that's what it was because it was classified. Yeah. The military's position remains firm. So does the position of those who investigate UFO sightings, like Mantell's, for a living. It's always impressed me that he was chasing something other than a balloon, even though to this day it would be very difficult to prove it. One thing about it, though, after searching all the records and after the Air Force claimed that that it was a skyhook balloon, uh, they have pretty good records on all the launches, but they never could establish a launch date for that day. And the mystery continues. Two quick footnotes. We've heard references to Mantell's plane being a P-51 and an F-51 Mustang. In 1946, the designation P-51, P for pursuit, was changed to F-51, F for fighter, because of a new designation scheme through the United States Air Force. It's basically the same plane, but for the record, Mantell was flying an F-51. Also, there were several reported sightings of UFOs on the day of Mantell's death, including Madisonville and Owensboro. Newly found documents left off the official Blue Book records show that some of these objects were maneuvering and could not be attributed to balloons of any kind. So for now, this case remains a mystery.